Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm Aaron Brooks, and I work at the Lona Cloud Group at Viasat. Uh, Viasat is a cutting edge satellite uh, and communications company with products and services in uh, government, uh, commercial, and consumer markets, uh, including Exceed's uh, satellite internet service. Uh, by the way, I should mention uh, that we have satellites in space. There we go. So Viasat acquired LonoCloud uh, nearly a year ago, and these are my beloved uh, LonoCloud coworkers. And as a distributed team, uh, this is where we work every day. And I show you this because these are the characters and the setting for our story. Before I introduce my talk, I want to take you on a journey, a journey that starts nearly three years ago uh, with our first commit and brings you to where we are today with over 100 projects and 1,000 namespaces. Our journey starts on a fine morning in April of 2011, and it started as many projects do with an empty README. In six months' time, our team had grown from, uh, to five engineers. We had 89 namespaces across 11 projects with a total of 6,000 lines of code. Most of our projects were exploratory in nature, uh, but we're also building the groundwork for our core infrastructure. Two months later, in January and December, we were ready to build uh, our, a project to showcase our technology infrastructure in the form of a mobile health demo. The mob mobile health demo, uh, the videos available on YouTube, uh, showed live remote clients uh, streaming data uh, in a scalable and fault tolerant manner to a distributed uh, processing and monitoring infrastructure. The particularly cool part of this demo is that it was not a thin, thin facade, but in fact, all the parts were actually working. This is a very uh, productive time for us, and it was a testament to Clojure, but it was also a testament uh, to our team and our workflow. We had one project with one branch and one repo. We were practicing uh, a form of maximum continuous integration, and at many points, uh, we're pushing new commits every few minutes. The workflow was great for our code, but as the project grew, uh, we found we needed to fork and fix uh, a number of third-party projects outside of our one project, one repo fits all model. For a brief period, we installed artifacts manually, uh, but soon set up an artifact repository to share canonical artifacts. By July, uh, things were going great. Our team had doubled in size, and we had picked up several clients. We now had 10 engineers, and the rate of uh, was really starting to pick up. Uh, we started splitting our demo project into a number of proper dependencies and automated the snapshot and dependency builds in Bash. Now you can see where this is going to go. By the fall of 2012, we had the same number of engineers, but we had more than doubled the number of projects. And unsurprisingly, a build infrastructure of Bash scripts does not scale well. So we set up a proper continuous integration server. However, CI wasn't, uh, server wasn't enough. Uh, it wasn't able to keep up with our peak rates of integration and was slowing our, our uh, workflow down. We also had to use either snapshots, which developers had to remember to constantly pull, or we needed uh, to remember to bump uh, release versions and dependencies, and neither of these were working well for us. To address these problems, uh, Alan Dipert, Chris Hauser, and Jonathan Claggett created a tool called Line CYA. Line CYA, uh, when run, uh, computes the dependencies between projects within a single repository and builds and installs snapshot artifacts uh, in dependency order. Because Line CYA understands dependencies based on the entire set of checked out projects, all projects have to be in the same repository. This meant that you couldn't uh, have one project dependent on, on an older version of another project without reverting the changes uh, of, within the repo. And this was tricky because multiple projects were already living in the same repository. By the way, for the curious, I'm led to believe that CYA stands for Continuous Your Integration. Nearly a year ago, uh, LonoCloud was acquired by Viasat, and this acquisition brought with it uh, a number of new projects, new deliverables, and the opportunity to open source uh, several of our components. This pushed us solidly into the territory of multiple repositories, but since Line CYA only works with a single repository, we had to solve this with more bash scripts. By this past fall, our band-aids couldn't hold any longer. Our team of uh, 12 engineers was now managing roughly 1,000 namespaces in more than 100 projects across 23 repositories with increasing levels of pain. It was this pain that led to the creation of LineVoom, and we've been using LineVoom for the past several months, 
and has rescued us from the pain and misery of our uh, managing our dependencies. I share this story uh, so that we can look at the different uh, phases of productivity and pain as projects grow. Uh, pain occurs uh, when the tools are ill-suited to our needs, and uh, productivity happens when our tools and processes align with what we need to accomplish. As our project grows, and it, uh, our needs change, and to remain productive uh, and to avoid pain, we need our process and tools to adapt to our needs. Lineboom works at a number of scales, uh, and it should be considered whether your project is small or large. But I'd like to quickly add that this is not a talk to tell you how your workflow should go or that you should uh, be uh, using our process. The point of this talk is to introduce you to new workflow options uh, that can help keep you productive and help you to avoid pain. <clears throat> and now, a proper talk introduction. Uh, first, we'll uh, take a look at questions that any dependency system should be able to answer. We'll take a brief look at complexities of the dependency and uh, build uh, and delivery space. And we'll introduce LineVoom and the box utility and see how they work through several workflows. Finally, we'll take a look at where these tools are headed. Let's, let's take a look at uh, several questions which exist in the build and dependency space. <coughs> uh, and in particular, uh, these are problems that uh, most tools struggle to deliver sufficient answers for. First off, how do I find the commit that was the origin of a particular dependency? Secondly, Given a dependency chain, how, what is the process between fixing E and using it in A? And in particular, how much effort uh, does it take and how long does it take? Also, uh, we'll take a look at branches. How do I manage a uh, project across multiple uh, branches simultaneously? And thirdly, uh, we'll look at uh, third-party dependencies. What is my process for using unreleased upstream fixes or creating my own forked fixes of an upstream project and uh, using those artifacts. So when considering tools that provide answers to these questions, we need to take into account how these tools interact with our existing tools and processes. It turns out this is no small task. Uh, the build independency space is massive and complicated, so much so that I won't attempt to address uh, the complexities in this talk. Uh, so let me show, it, show you what I mean. Now, this, this is sort of unfair. This is not a regular graph. The various nodes and edges uh, are different types of things and have different types of relationships. Also, this is a simplification. The truth is much more complicated. It should, however, give a sense of what's involved and why I'm not going to delve into this deeply during the talk. I'm not evading the, uh, addressing the complexity entirely. Rather than trying to address all the different approaches and variations in this space, I'm structuring the talk so that uh, we can talk about issues that are important to you. I expect to have about 10 minutes at the end of the talk where you can ask whatever questions you have. Uh, so be sure to write down your questions and have them ready. I want to take a brief moment to give some background on the behavior of releases versus snapshots. Specifically, I'm talking about them in the context of dependency specification. By the way, in this talk, anytime I say snapshots, assume that I mean snapshots and version ranges, since they have approximately the same behavior. If you're unfamiliar with Maven version ranges, that's perfectly fine. You can continue to remain so. So to understand what's wrong, uh, where snapshots go wrong, let's first look at uh, release dependency specification at work. So if you specify release version 1.2.3, you get the artifact 1.2.3. However, if your dependency specification has the word snapshot, Maven will be clever and will fetch the latest, i.e. highest sorting artifact that it can find for that version. If you and I are working on a project that depends on foo123 snapshot, you and I may be using completely different versions, uh, influenced by the timing of our last dependency fetch. This creates a it worked for me set of problems that compound severely when you're working with permutations of several dozen snapshots. So why do people use snapshot dependencies? Well, this is the easy path uh, for continuous integration. Integration just happens continuously. And while it's true that no developer diligence is required, uh, the, to, to bump project versions and their corresponding dependency specifications. This isn't really saving anyone effort in the long run. It's a recipe for automated uh, mayhem, and developers are ever faced with new permutations of dependencies. As closure developers, we should immediately spot the mutable state as the source of the pain. So why don't people just work with releases? Well, release dependency trees uh, don't have the mutation problems that snapshots do, 
but they do require considerable effort and diligence. Uh, developers must remember to bump version strings anytime they want to create and release a new version. And then they need to update dependency specifications pointing to that new release. Often this process must be propagated uh, across the dependency graph to be useful. In other words, if A depends on B, depends on C, you obviously need to update B's dependency on C, but now you've created a new B, and A is still depending on the old B. So A's dependency on B also needs to be updated. Because of the extra effort required, dependencies tend to stagnate uh, across the dependency graph, and this turns out to not be good for continuous integration. Finally, we're ready to introduce LineVoom. As its name suggests, LineVoom is a LineAgain plugin which can satisfy dependencies directly from source commits in a repository. But it will only build dependencies if a canonical artifact cannot be found. At the core is a version specification that we'll unpack in a moment. Most fundamentally, LineVoom allows us to eliminate the need for snapshot dependencies by being able to use any commit as a dependency. No version bumping is required. It also gives us a mechanism to uh, safely and easily update those fixed dependencies. LineVoom is inspired by a number of previous projects. Uh, several companies ago, Joel Martin and I uh, created a configuration management tool called CM Project. CM Project could fetch and build sources from a number of different source control systems. It could peg and freshen versions, and it knew how to manage dependency relationships between those dependencies. But it was built on GNU Make, and this is not a great fit for the Clojure and Maven ecosystem. Also related are several uh, features of the Mix tool for, the, uh, for Elixir, as well as a very similar version scheme used by Clojure Skip Script. There are also a number of LineAgain plugins that touch on various aspects of, uh, that LineVoom delivers, and I've highlighted ones that I think are uh, particularly relevant. So what do these versions look like? Well, here's a typical LineAgain project.clj. Uh, notice that we have a uh, dependency on the SeekX library. By uh, adding uh, the LineVoom plugin and adding some metadata to the dependency, uh, we can now use uh, Voom specification. So let's take a, a closer look at this new enhanced uh, dependency specification. Parts of the dependency specification should still look similar. We still have our group and artifact ID, as well as our semantic version. But at the end of the version specification, we now see a, a git commit SHA, which is preceded by a git commit time. So why have we added these? Well, many traditional CI systems and Maven plugins uh, will create artifacts with a build number. Uh, build numbers are typically a monotonic counter that's managed by the continuous integration server. This gives us two properties, uniqueness and sortability. Now, there's a caveat on the sortability, but I'll get to that in a moment. Instead of using a build number that gives you, uh, 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 using a SHA instead of a build number gives you a different set of properties. A SHA, by definition, uh, has, is uh, globally unique. They're also reproducible. At any point in time, you can derive a, the SHA from the commit that you started from. You also have source mapping, which is the reverse property, the ability to uh, get to the source from the SHA. Using a commit time presents different trade-offs. Commit times are not guaranteed to be unique. For example, a rebase operation will often yield uh, several commits that have the same commit time. But commit times do have useful sorting behavior. As with SHAs, commit times are reproducible. Uh, we can extract them from the originating commit. A commit time is also meaningful to humans. If we have a version that combines a SHA and a commit time, we get all the above properties combined. Now, I'll note that sortability is of interest uh, to legacy Maven tools uh, that use sortable, uh, sortable versions to find newer versions based on sort order. Now, all of these ver solutions, uh, the build time is a weak sense of order. Later sort values may not mean the most recent versions of code. The above dependency specification uh, is a metadata annotation, uh, which provides the context for the three line boom commands shown here. We have build depths, freshen, and wrap. The build depths command behaves like line depths, except where the artifact cannot be found. In this case, there is Voom metadata. Uh, the, sorry. In the case where there is Voom metadata, the dependency uh, source repository is cloned, the artifact is built, and installed locally in the M2 repository. 
I should note that for the uh, separate build up step, uh, this, we expect this to go away. Uh, the functionality will happen as part of the line depths phase, um, at least if it's not prohibited by a profile setting. The freshen command is used to update the project.clj with the latest uh, versions of dependencies that match the constraints of the Voom metadata. Freshen will only update a project file if it finds a single, unambiguous, newer version. If it finds multiple uh, possible resolutions, it will show the user uh, a table of those resolutions. Let's take a look at what this uh, looks like. So in this example, we're going to make the CLJ chop chop dependency a Voom dependency. The first thing we need to do is add the Voom metadata so Lion Voom knows how to find the source repository. Now we run the Lion Voom freshen command. This is what uh, freshen looks like when it finds more than one version uh, to update. It will, and it will present a conflict resolution table. Now, because the table's so large, I split it into two parts for better viewing. Uh, the repository, uh, the project, and the version are all the same. So that's not going to help us disambiguate these. But in the second half of the table, uh, we see that the branch, the commit time, and the SHA are different. And we can use those uh, to determine which one we want. So after considering the details uh, from the mul uh, multiple resolutions table, uh, we've decided we want the master branch. So we'll add that as a constraint to our Voom uh, dependency metadata. Now we can run Freshen again. Now when Freshen finds a single version matching our constraints, uh, it will update the project.clj uh, file. And we can see that here. Finally, uh, line Voom provides a wrap command. The, with the wrap command, we can run Linegan subcommands uh, using the project version uh, set to a Voom version. Uh, this does so without modifying the project.clj. Uh, using this command, uh, you can install or deploy uh, Voom version artifacts or wrap any other commands that you, as you please. To be clear, there's a difference between using snapshot in version strings and in dependency specifications. From a maintainer's uh, standpoint, we don't want to take your take away your ability to make statements about version quality. Continue using snapshots to qualify your versions. The problems occur when snapshots are used in a dependency specification, and my recommendation is please stop. With LineVoom, we have a fundamental ship, shift uh, from the existing Maven dependency model. Firstly, dependency specifications are names instead of mutable references. Secondly, they're immutable values instead of opaque and stateful objects. As Clojure developers, we know the value of immutability over state. But with an immutable tree of dependencies, how do we keep things that we need to do quickly and easily, uh, uh, such as setting up arbitrary debug state or experimenting with several projects simultaneously? We know that we want bounded mutability in some places so we can get stuff done. This is where Box comes in. Box helps us address the difficulties uh, imposed by mutability. Boxes are about mutation and about ease. They also provide a context of uh, related dependencies uh, so that we can build helpful automation uh, across the multiple related projects. Box is a, tool, uh, is a tool managed directory that allows us to bring several projects together. When project X is added to a box, uh, any other projects that depend on project X will use the box project directory for X instead of the box artifact, or instead of the project X artifact. In other words, Never mind what the dependency specification states. Use the project X I have right here. It's time to be a bit frank about Box. Boxes have much as of yet unrealized potential. Boxes use what I have right here mechanism is built on Linegan, uh, Linegan's checkouts feature. And the rest of it is built uh, out of Simlinks, a bash script, a bash alias, and the LionVoom plugin. So it's slow. Uh, the Simlinks can confuse editors and uh, all of it can confuse users. But Box is useful right now and addresses uh, issues which need to be addressed. So I think it solves a minimum subset of functionality in the most expedient way. So what could we do with automation? Well, with the knowledge that Box has of the interrelationships between dependencies, there's several processes that Box can automate uh, at, to help you work across several projects. One of the most obvious is ordering check-ins uh, according to dependency depth uh, so that developers don't have to get the dependency ordering right on their own. Uh, it would also be handy to have projects uh, toggled between their stated dependency version and the tip of the branch that they're on. All of that automation is in the future features category, and it will be added soon because we need it. Uh, but 
there's not much to show right now uh, with box functionality since box is mostly just a place. But here, here's an example. So this shows how to create a new box and how to add a uh, project to that box. Adding additional projects looks very similar. Uh, the one thing that I would note here is that uh, we can provide additional context to the box add command, which is the same sort of data that we add to the Voom as Voom metadata uh, for Voom. So if we need to say what branch or what context we want this, we can uh, specify the same sort of thing. So here's how line Voom and box help address the questions that we posed earlier in the talk. For sources, we can either manually copy and paste of the repo URL and the commit SHA from the project.clj and check it out, or we can use box to help us automatically uh, get the proper version of the dependency. For integration, we have several options. First, we can freshen each of the projects directly, uh, finding new versions as we go along, or we can wait for an auto freshening, uh, which takes zero effort, but uh, somewhat more time. Or we can temporarily integrate dependencies directly together for our own use uh, in, in a box. Uh, Voom versions and branches uh, don't collide as a natural property. And so uh, this makes it possible to do uh, branchy work without worrying about trying to reconcile brand, uh, project versions on both branches simultaneously. And this also applies to third-party dependencies. Uh, because third-party dependencies are managed in the same way. They're just like branches. Uh, we can, when we're using Voom versions, they naturally will not collide. One of the next projects uh, is to split, out, split up the monolithic uh, line Voom into a Voom library, a separate line Voom plugin, and a separate box command. Uh, once we've split these things apart, we can create a Maven Voom plugin, uh, which will enable uh, Maven POM projects uh, to use Voom versions. And we'll also enhance uh, line Voom usage as well. As I noted earlier, there's plenty of opportunity uh, for improvement with Box, particularly around Box automation and the user experience. So the images used throughout this talk uh, come from uh, Ali Brosh's uh, fantastic webcomic, Hyperbole and a Half, and I'm very appreciative of her generous Creative Commons licensing. Also, she just pu published a, a book of her comics uh, back in November. So hopefully we've learned that snapshots bring us uh, uncontrolled mutability and we should stop using them. Uh, we've also learned that LineVoom helps us avoid <coughs> snapshots by making every commit a potential uh, release candidate. We've also learned that Voom Freshen allows us to easily and safely move our dependencies forwards. And finally, LineVoom and LineBox give us options but don't force us into a particular workflow. So this brings us to our discussion time, and now it's your chance uh, to see how LineVoom can work for you. By the way, I do have extra slides and can ad lib ad nauseum uh, if uh, we have periods of awkward silence. So fire away. Right. So uh, there's a number of features to be implemented. Uh, this, is, this is one of them. Uh, th so the question was, uh, how do you uh, keep Voom from updating uh, certain uh, dependencies? So uh, we have a notion of being able to uh, say that a particular dependency should not be updated or should not be auto-updated. Um, so we can lock them in. Right now, uh, the, the mechanism would be uh, you'd run fresh and it would update uh, the dependency in the working copy, and you could revert that one line back. But uh, shortly, we'll have a uh, don't touch this sort of option. Other questions? Yes? Yes, line checkout still works. Um, all we're doing is augmenting it so that we can manage it better. Uh, so, uh, so, how many people in here are actually using Clojure? Excellent. 
How many of you are using uh, Linegan uh, for Clojure? Okay. How many are using something else? Nobody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alan. Uh, so how many of you are using snapshot dependencies? How many of you will continue to use snapshot dependencies? <laughs> See me after class. Um, so uh, how many of you are, uh, could uh, potentially use uh, line boom uh, if it were better suited? Okay. How many of you are actively thinking of using line boom? Awesome. So uh, what sort of things do you guys uh, see as needed uh, before you actually adopt this? Right. That's something we actually have right now. Uh, we can, uh, within the semantic version, we can, uh, right now, the default behavior is to not go past the first two, the major minor. Uh, the incremental uh, is, is open. Uh, and right now, you can, we have a couple of, of ways to, to uh, uh, sculpt that, uh, but you'd still get freshening within uh, incrementals. Good question. So the question is, is this focused on a single project uh, per repository, or can it work with multiple projects uh, in a repository? Uh, we started doing this because we have multiple projects in a single repository, um, and it works well with, with either. And in fact, you could sort of see that in the Freshen table. One of the uh, fields was path. Uh, so one of the ways to disambiguate, uh, if, if you had two projects of the very same name in the same repository, you could disambiguate according to path. Yeah. No, it, it's actually uh, doesn't touch, box doesn't touch. So the question is, uh, does box update uh, the, the version in the, the project file, right? Is that? Right. Yeah. Uh, no, box is all about um, using what you have on hand. And if you have something right here in the directory, it might not be checked in. It might not have a version yet. So we can't uh, point to any particular version. What box is doing, the way line checkouts works is it, it actually adds uh, a series of directories to your class path live. And so Box is built on top of checkouts, and it's doing that. So uh, it effectively, Box is overriding. For any project that's in your Box, it will override that in instead of the dependency specification. So um, if you, as soon as you remove a project from your Box, you'll go back to uh, the artifact version that's specified. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So the question is, are, are, are we at nirvana? Uh, you know, have we reached the happy state? Um, I, I think we've definitely solved all the problems that we have so far, um, all, the, all the different things that we hit along the, the journey um, that caused pain uh, we would be addressed by this. And um, there's something sort of fundamental to being able to lock down versions uh, and, and you know, lock down your dependency tree um, and you know, get away from snapshots. So snapshots was part of the recurring pain. Um, and you know the other part of the recurring pain is having to you know remember to uh, bump versions every time you push something. Uh, so Voom completely bypasses both of those. Um, you're using fixed versions, uh, even if the CI system hasn't spit out the uh, artifact yet. You can use, uh, you can build uh, the artifact that you need. Um, so I I anticipate this being able to take us. Uh, a long way down the road, and it, I, I think it uh, addresses some pretty fundamental things. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Right, so the question is, if, if you have multiple projects in the same repository, 
uh, do you have to uh, freshen all of the projects? Uh, and the answer is yes, they're, they're independent uh, projects. If you're using Box uh, as your workflow, which you don't have to, I mean, you can use Voom without Box. Um, uh, but if you're using Box, uh, Box will actually clone the repo efficiently multiple times. Uh, and so you can independently move your dependencies. So one of the problems of having multiple projects in the same repo is if you have one checkout, you have one state of all the, the dependencies. So we want to be able to basically virtualize. We, we act as if they're in separate repos and ignore the fact that they happen to live in the same place. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Go ahead. Right. So uh, I, I alluded to this in the talk, and I didn't talk about it, and I was hoping somebody would ask. So uh, one of the things that we can do is run adjunct to this continuous integration server an auto uh, freshen or an auto bumping uh, service uh, that uh, is notified any time uh, a new project version uh, passes its CI tests. Um, and it can, off on the side, uh, check out uh, any dependencies of that pro any projects that depend on that, uh, freshen them, run tests locally, and if that passes, uh, commit and the CI system uh, can actually propagate uh, all dependencies. And so what you can have is anytime you update dependencies, they'll propagate through the system automatically. It will cause you to make your uh, continuous integration tests better. So not a bad thing. Go ahead. Uh, we plan to. Uh, this, is, this is in the future uh, functionality, uh, but it's, it's definitely something we plan to do. Right now, uh, you know, we've, we've been using this for uh, approximately two, two and a half months, uh, and all it takes is, is a couple of developers being diligent to, to run Freshen uh, to keep things up to date, but uh, it would certainly be nicer to be able to have uh, this automatically happen and, and really advances the state of continuous integration to an, a new level. Other questions? OK. Well, uh, on a last note, uh, I created a HackFest entry. Uh, so folks who are interested in helping to improve the notably missing features from uh, LineVoom and or Box can come join me on Wednesday. And I want to thank you very much. <laughs>